Sarah, tell me a bit about what today is about and what your role is here. Okay. So I'm Sarah Jones, I'm Deputy Head for the School of Media and Performing Arts at Coventry University. Um, my role is very mixed and I'm really lucky because I get to spend about half my time playing within the virtual space, um, kind of immersive technologies. And that's what I'm doing today. So we're running the Coventry Storytelling Festival, which is an open festival in partnership with the BBC um, for people to come and look at different forms of telling stories um, in all different mediums. But the one that obviously I'm really excited about is 360 and virtual reality and looking at how you tell stories, how, how you tell stories for experience um, and the different narratives and getting emotional immersion and all those kinds of areas which is really really interesting. Yeah because VR um, 360 breaks the fourth wall doesn't it? You, you walk through that and you are involved in the story yourself. So how, how do you see this going on in education? Absolutely. The, the technology, immersive technologies, and I use that term as an umbrella for 360 VR, AR and all those kinds of future developments, um, is an opportunity to experience. And what I get really interested in is learning through experience. The, the, the best ways that you learn is when you're actually part of, of a story, you're involved, um, that sense of embodiment in another world. And if you learn through that, you get much, a much deeper learning experience, which, which is so important um, in an age where things are so busy and so hectic and so much information. This is the chance to become immersed somewhere else. Um, so I think the technology as it's developing from 360, more virtual reality, um, and then AR as well, it, it opens up that opportunity to say to teachers, to students, okay, if you want to learn about this, how would you experience it? And then we create those experiences so somebody can learn within a headset where they want to learn. Yeah, because your background is in news and you've worked with people like Noni de la Peña, is that right? I haven't worked with Noni, but um, I, I, I do know, know Noni. She, she's kind of like me, but in, in the States and is amazing, um, unlike me. Um, but she, she does some great work with um, immersive journalism, but she, she does a lot of computer um, generated um, VR. I care about the real. I care about the, the 360 filming um, as a way to get into the space. Um, because I, I was a, a television news correspondent, um, I film, I, I create films. Um, so for me, I love having that real. But I think you can only go so far with 360 and then that's when you start need to need to bring in computer um, generated images and manipulations and the interactivity. Um, I always think that your first VR experience is amazing. You have that wow moment. And then the second, third, fourth times, you know, you kind of get used to the space, but you still think it's good, but it starts losing that impact as you do with everything. You know, it's not unusual now that you can do everything on your phone because you're used to it. Um, so with this technology, it's having to look at how do we keep the momentum? How do we sustain the interest? And it's only when you start adding in the virtual reality into 360 and that convergence of the two technologies um, that we can start manipulating environments. So we still have the real, but we're adding in interactive elements. We're adding in um, the sense of ownership and control and freedom in a virtual world, um, which is very difficult to do, um, but we're slowly getting there. That's what I, I was going to ask you next about the affordances of the sort of technology and how what, what, what has worked best in your experience up to now? Oh, um, <laughs> it's probably a short list of what's worked best. Um, telling stories in, and creating stories in 360 is really difficult. Um, I, I shot stories every day, I edited stories every day, and when it comes to 360, there's just a block. The technology isn't there yet to make it easy and simple. We're starting to see it, um, which is great, um, with just simple 360 images. And I remember a few years ago, I had a, a bubble scope cam um, as an attachment onto my phone where I, I it mirrored a projection so you could take a 360 image, um, which kind of got me thinking about how you would use 360 degree images. Um, so, so that technology is getting easier. The little Ricoh camera, the new Samsung camera, those that self-stitch are brilliant. It makes life so much easier. Um, and then you can look at manipulating those images for education and you do still get that wow factor. It's not the same as having the, the Nokia Ozo, which is $60,000 um, and creating a film, but for, for education, 
communication, creating a 360 image and then using things like ThingLink, which have just come up with a VR um, application where you can annotate that image with extra information. You can layer it on with video, with graphics, with images um, and, and sounds. That really helps the learning. So it's about, um, it, it's about using those simple tools to get into the space. And Google Expeditions have done amazing work with that. So the Expedition program takes largely still images in 360 and allows a, a child to go on a, a virtual field trip anywhere in the world. We look to take the education experiences one step further Further, I care about embodied educational experiences where you become someone else in a world and you learn through that. Um, but certainly the technology at Simple 360 is okay to use. It's when you start trying to create those, those deeper um, films where you're having to deal with stitching, um, which keeps me awake most nights. Now, um. now <laughs> I wanted to ask you about the embodied bit because basically it's got sort of opportunities to think about um, how people can sort of almost revision their role in society. It's quite a strong uh, experience going into VR and I know when I was in Second Life a lot of people were cross-gender. They were mm -hmm. either men pretending to be women or women pretending to be men or, mm -hmm. or just had taken on that role. But within a real context, how do you see that going? in terms of revisioning your role in society? Yeah, I, I think there's there's been some great work already. Um, Mel Slater is an amazing academic that's written a lot about, um, about race and religion within virtual spaces where you become someone else to, to understand. Um, and certainly Specular Theory in the States, they've done two films at, at Sundance um, called Perspectives, one chapter one and one chapter two. And the first one was about um, drug rape um, or, or gang rape, I guess, where, where a girl was raped at a fraternity party um, where you, you see what's happening and you are the girl and then it switches to the perspective of the group of guys that are at the party so you understand it from two different perspectives and the one that they did this year chapter two was around police brutality um, so you, you're getting that sense of understanding what it's like to be someone else walking in someone else's shoes um, Sarah Hill in Missouri has just done a great piece um, about um, disabilities I think in Zimbabwe um, where they don't have access to wheelchairs. So it's all about crawling around on the floor and, and you kind of understand what, what that must be like. So it's about using the technology to understand what it's like to be somebody else in the world, um, which is really, really powerful. So it is kind of that embodied experience um, to really help further um, education and further understanding um, different communities, which, which I just find fascinating. Um, but then applying that into the wider education world, so you know, you could have an experience which I haven't created, which I'm sure someone will do, um, as, as a child at school in the war. You know, what, what's it like to have a history lesson taught in virtual reality? Um, don't just show them what it's like actually be there, be in that classroom, um, put your hand up, um, talk to the teacher, engage in that scenario, but in a different time and in a different place. And for children, I've got two young girls, I know that that's going to help them learn a lot more than me telling them what it's like from a textbook. And so how do you feel, how are you going to go on in the future, next few months, year? Oh, I just want to change the world through virtual reality. <laughs> I think it's really, I, I think it's such a powerful tool. Um, for me, the first time that I put on a headset, and I realized that there was no longer that barrier that I always had when telling stories, that I could actually be somewhere um, and understand different people's perspectives and have that real deep connection. Um, so for me at the moment, it's still exploring the narratives and there's so much work that needs to be done on that. In terms of storytelling, we need a new way to tell stories. Um, I always say to everybody that's interested in this space, first of all, it's looking at experience, what you want an audience to experience, but it's also, about getting them um, to, to understand that you can't tell stories in a traditional way. There's no point in telling a story how you would tell a story in a linear format um, and just filming on a 360 camera. That doesn't help, that's not using the technology and I hate tech for tech's sake. So it's about looking at the technology and saying how can I use this to create an experience. So for me a lot of my work is done exploring that, looking at what's working. We're getting to see lots of content being produced, some bad content, some really good content. So understanding from an audience's perspective what works and what's also sustainable. Because I can guarantee every person I put a headset on will say wow, but it's making them use it time and time again. 
learning. Um, but then it's about using all of that within education. Um, so I've been working on a paramedic scenario and we're looking at various healthcare provisions um, for students to learn through this technology, um, which is really exciting. And we're testing that in a couple of weeks with 60 students or with headsets on um, where they become the virtual paramedic um, and have to make decisions about someone's care. Um, so that's quite exciting. And there's so many experiences that I'm, I'm ready to create um, to help people learn. There's a lot of women in this, in this area. So how's that, how's that come about? It's an emergent area, possibly. Yeah, I love that you say there's a lot of women in the area. I, I had a, a, I saw it on my Twitter feed earlier today, the, the Cheltenham Science Festival, I think, and there, there's a panel on the future of VR and some great people talking, all men. And I run VR Girls UK with um, Samantha Kingston, who runs Virtual Umbrella, who's brilliant. And part of what we do is, is trying to ensure that there's a balance on virtual um, reality panels and conferences. Um, and I, I get really annoyed when it's a women panel. Um, for me, there's so many amazing women in this space um, and they need to be on all of the panels. There was a, a b and um, live stream the other week about 360 video. It's like five guys. It's like, I know so many amazing filmmakers, female filmmakers. Um, Having that balance is really important to me. I always say if you want to, if you can see it, you can be it. Um, and for kids growing up, people loving this technology, wanting to get into it, if they just see that it's men on every panel, they'll think that there's no women in the space. And there are, there's some amazing women, um, not just in the creative storytelling frame like I am, um, but also within education, within health, within programming, within coding, all those kinds of areas. Um, so it's making sure that all of their voices are heard, um, and sometimes they're not. Um, but there are amazing women um, doing work in, in VR, and for me, I just want to keep shouting about that.